Today we'll introduce you to the MVC framework. Right here, you can readily recognize the counter app. It's created every time you start up Flutter and create a new project. Well, I did the same thing, but now I'm going to incorporate the MVC framework. Let's do that now. Of course, if you if you comment out the material library, you get a number of complaints. But we will now introduce the NBC framework, and those complaints are all gone. The NBC framework, called NBC underscore application. Now I'm going to implement it. I'm going to call it class my app NBC. App Staple Widget. It requires you implement the Create View. This is to coincide with the MVC design pattern. The MVC design pattern, you have three components generally recognized to be consistent in developing computer programs. M stands for Model, B stands for View, and C stands for Controller. M represents the data of the application, View represents the interface of the application, and C represents the event handling of the application. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to simply incorporate that that method Again, this is part of the MVC framework. You have an app stateful widget put into the run app. And then you have the view. The look and feel. So now how do we emulate now the counter app? Simply provide that look and feel. Let's do that now. That even introduces the home screen. And there we are. So let's close this original app and I'll run this again I'll speed up the video to forgo the compiling and such And there we are. We have your counter app. Now, of course, we're not taking advantage of the MVC design pattern itself at this point. What can we do? Let's set aside this particular app here. And let's go to another project which I've incorporated the MVC design pattern even further. Let's run this. And here we are. Work just like your conventional. 
but this one is implementing the MVC design pattern. So let's walk through this now and see how that's done. So here is the here is the widget that is passed to run app function. Here's the view of the application. And here's the look and feel. There's the home screen. Go there. And let's finally go to the build function. This is the state object that contains the home screen that you're seeing right here and there. There is the text file to push the button at many times. Now what we're doing, we're following the MVC design pattern. In this case, we have a view that talks to the controller that talks to the model. Let's try to explain this. Here is the view fact can deduce that the view in this implementation is the widget that's returned from the build function. This is extended by the state MVC, which of course is coming from the MVC framework. It's registering a controller. This controller is talking with the model. As you can see here, because it knows how to access the data. This controller, of course, responds to events. So when a button is pressed, we again turn to the controller to address that event. So I'll put a breakpoint there and let's watch this. controller is now going to reply, or I should say respond, to that event. What does it do? At this point, at the interface, we don't know what it does. We have no idea. Nor should we. That's the reason why design patterns separate the areas of responsibility. In this case, the MVC identified the interface is separate from the data is separate from the event handling. So on press controller is now going to do something. At that level we have no idea what it is. As it happens the controller is calling the model the data right here. It too has its API is on pressed as well. Notice I'm taking advantage of the Flutter framework itself, deducing the API, the, the name of its getters and its methods, emulating that of the Flutter framework itself. It too has on pressed on pressed, on pressed, data, the controller has a data field. Why is that? Because the text object has a data field of type string. So does the controller. I turn to the Flutter Framework's own API to conceive my API. What does the model do on pressed? There's a counter of type integer. Of course, the other aspects of this application doesn't know that, the interface nor the controller. This is in the realm of the model. It's concerned with the counter. It's concerned with the data that's involved in this application. 
this breaking up of the responsibilities allows you to be more dynamic in your delivery of your solution. This allows you to break up your development teams, for example, and naturally, naturally distribute them between the interface, the data, and the event handling. So it too has a data field type string. We don't know what it is back here at this point. And we don't care. So let's fire that. Go out of there. Let's go out of there. As you notice, the interface has a set state method. It's inside the set state method. We know what that means. That means that this build will soon fire. So let's do that. Just like so. But let's change the arrangement a little bit. Notice the MVC allows you to change the lines of communication. You can have your controller talk back to the view. Well, let's reflect that now in the demo app. So, how do we do that? Controller, again, has the API on pressed, on pressed. Comment this out. We'll need to go back to the method, to that controller, I should say. And we'll comment this out and introduce this stretch of code. This is representing that line of communication. It calls the views set state method right there. How does it do that? That's well, because the controller has registered with this state object. So it has access now to all that state objects, methods, and functions, as well as a certain degree of getters. That's for another video. So let's see how that works now in that arrangement. I'll quickly close this, speed up the video. and present that configuration. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, that's just it. You see, it allows you to be adaptive. Maybe you want your controller to have more <laughs> control its response to events. When it's ready, when it has responded to an event, it tells the view now to refresh the screen, calling the set state. Okay, here we are. So let's try that again. Maybe we should put a breakpoint. Let's put a breakpoint there. I press on it. Now, it calls the controller back here. The floating button was pressed. It calls an event, initiates an event, the controller, its role is to respond to such an event, and it does so. And this time, go through, here's the model. We don't know what this does at the, at the controller level and or at the view level, but we do know that here at the model, it an increments an integer in its class. It does that, and when that response is done, the controller now calls the view. And there we are. What does this mean? Why do we have it like that? It allows you to maintain your source code that much easier.
It allows you to allocate resources. You can dedicate programmers just to the interface, just to the data, just to the controller. And they don't have to step in on each other's toes because they turn to the Flutter framework itself for the API. Let's do a quick demo now and changing. I'm going to change something here. I'm just going to go into the model and switch out. Some of you may be familiar with the demo app when you write your first Flutter app. It's the name generator. Well, let's see what happens when I do this. I'm going to close this, start it up again. This time, I've changed the data source. What is that going to do? We'll speed up the video to bring this up the new app. What is this all about? Again, if you're familiar with that other application, it creates word pairs. <laughs> so let's walk through this now and see what happened. We go back here, put a breakpoint. Now I'm going to hit the button. Again, the interface calls the controller to respond to an event, the event being pressing the button. It turn calls the models on press method. Let's look at this class now. Look at this model. The model has changed. We're using the same name allowing us to switch out models that much quicker. But if you notice, here's the model for the counter app. And now here's the model for the name generator. Completely different, but the APIs are the same. I've allowed the class names to be the same. When you press on, press here, as it happens, it involves a counter, but it's involving the English words plugin to generate a value. And look at the data now. So let's go back to that interface. Data. The controller data. We haven't changed a stitch of code here. We changed the export value to import a different data source. A different model. Data. The model has a field called data. And unbeknownst to the view, unbeknownst to the controller, it's accessing a whole different data source. Look at that. That's the power of a design pattern that's broken up the three common responsibilities of a typical computer application, the data, the interface, and the event handling. We'll leave it at that. Then I'll show you how this design pattern allows you to change even the interface. <laughs> Cupertino, I've switched out the Cupertino interface, then I switched it back to Material. That's another video altogether. <laughs>